In 1741, two English explorers on Mont Blanc named a magnificent glacier the Mer de Glace, or Sea of Ice. Over the past hundred years, transport and tourism have brought the neighbouring resort of Chamonix great wealth and fame. There's also been a rapid rise in carbon emissions during this period, which now threatens the Mer de Glace's existence. The tourists which are coming here every, every year are seeing huge differences from a year to another, and this is completely related to the, the global warming. Glaciers are formed by freezing snow compacted over centuries. Recent warmer temperatures are preventing new ice from forming. The strong difference is the, the amount of snow at low altitude. Under 1,500 meters, a part of the, the snow that was fallen in the past is now rain, so it doesn't feed the, the ice. This is compounded by higher summer temperatures increasing the speed of melting. The Alps are disproportionately affected by global warming. During the 20th century, the Earth's temperature rose by 0.74 degrees Celsius. But places like Chamonix in the Alps recorded a rise of around 2 degrees Celsius. We have a very sensitive environment because of the permafrost, because of the glacier. It is reacting much more uh, fast. The loss of glaciers can have devastating knock-on effects. In uh, 2005, we have lost close to half a billion cubic meters of rock that have collapsed from this rock face. And this is related also to global warming because of the, the melting of the ice which is present into the cracks. Even if today we are stopping every gas emission, the glacier will continue to, to retreat for uh, many decades. We can do model, we can measure the evolutions, but it will be completely different at the, the mid uh, part of the century and the, at the end, at the end of this century, probably we'll have only maybe five or 10 percent of the ice we have now. It's estimated that by 2050, the Mer de Glace could cease to exist. Instead of the, the glacier, we'll have a, a little lake in the first turn and a large lake in the, in the last turn over there. So probably this lake will be interesting for the, the tourism. But above this lake, we have many uh, rock faces which can collapse. So it can create a risk for uh, Chamonix here. So we have to, to be very focused on such a risk, which are new risks in, in the Alps. Disappearing glaciers also threaten power supplies as the meltwater powering hundreds of hydroelectric plants begin to dwindle. In Austria, scientists are hoping technology can better inform them of this threat. For decades, they've logged glacier size with tape measures, but now new technologies are being applied. Also, this is a laser scanner and Gerade misst er sich über sein GPS ein, was äh, da oben in der Mitte ist, deswegen dreht er sich so, äh, um seinen Standpunkt einmal festzustellen. Das ist aber nur grob, also wir vermessen dann noch Fixpunkte mit dem äh, differenziellen GPS, damit die Lage natürlich viel korrekter noch ist als das GPS, was da. Und ich mache hier sicher ungefähr 20 Millionen Punkte und das ergibt dann ein schönes 3D-Geländemodell. They're also using environmental drone imaging to measure meltwater. Und es ist aber nicht ganz klar, besonders bei dem Speicher, wie viel Abfluss oder wie viel Wasser tatsächlich vom Gletscher in den Speicher fließt. Und um das einmal feststellen zu können, haben wir heuer probiert, mit der Drohne eben die Gletscher aufzunehmen, um so ja, die Veränderung oder die Abnahme für die nächsten Jahre zu dokumentieren und auch vielleicht festzustellen, wann ist der Gletscher vielleicht wirklich oder wann ist das Eis aufgebraucht worden. This shrinking glacier has dire consequences for the local community who rely on it for a green source of energy. What lessons can we learn from shrinking glaciers of the Alps? If you are not sure about the global warming, come here and you'll see the evolution.